Hello and welcome to Merlin's Brick News, the weekly show on all things brick building where we talk about setup dates and announcements from all the major brands, mocks of the week and new Lego ideas entries as well. Information is presented as always by setdb.org, the best source for set information on the internet. Let's get started right away. We have a couple of announcements from Blue Bricks. Um, first of all, the V100 locomotive, that is a diesel locomotive over here from uh, German uh, train operators and we are talking about the 106969. What is interesting about this one that this bad boy is not a typical 6 stud or 8 stud uh, locomotive but this is scale 1 by 18. So we are talking about 5140 pieces. This is a display model and is I guess the largest locomotive that has ever been put into a set um, built in bricks and you can see this already. I mean look at these you know how tiny these these all these pieces are. It's an enormous animal. So scale one by eighteen. So a friend of mine, uh, he um, did the mass, and this thing should go come close to seventy centimeters. Of course, if you don't believe that, uh, just go ahead and count the studs. As you can see, even the tracks are brick built because, of course, regular tracks can't handle this one. And as you can see here down below, there are even trans clear two by four bricks in there below there. So to, to hold this bad boy, so obviously these tracks can't hold it. Um, it's more than 5,000 pieces, so that's, I guess, a good assumption is there's a lot of large bricks in here that this will be also around 5 kilograms. So that is quite a locomotive, and I must say, it, it rather looks quite beautiful. I mean, it's, it's very well done. Of course, in that size, it's easy to get the shapes right. Um, so, I mean, I have seen these things, uh, you know, running over here in, in Germany and um, I must say they did a pretty good job here um, so if you were ever interested in a huge locomotive as a set not as a mock here you go and then we have an announcement for what Blue Bricks calls the Italian compact sports car in yellow I mean that is a Lancia Delta Integrale I guess I don't speak Italian unfortunately but um, I think yeah this is the famous um, also um, former rally car from the golden era of Lancia we are talking about the 106972 by Blue Bricks. This thing is going to have uh, slightly below 1,400 pieces. Um, we already have a parts list. Um, you can see the color distribution here. It's slightly below one kilogram. So a lot of time, small, small pieces in there. And yeah, of course, as always, we do not have a price yet, but really looking forward to this one. And then we have the Escape Shuttle by Blue Bricks. I mean, obviously, that is the uh, famous Escape Shuttle from uh, the first Alien movie, or I think... I think you could see it even better in the second movie in the beginning. Lubrix does not have the license, but so that's why they just called it Escape Shuttle. But of course, it is the thing that Ripley used uh, to escape. Um, we're talking about the 106. I mean, we all know that she didn't really escape. But anyhow, we're talking about the 106971. Uh, it's going to have 2,234 pieces. Uh, a lot of small pieces. You can see this. Usually when you go below one gram per piece, then it means, okay, the set has a few more details than average. Um, anyhow, uh, we do not have a price yet. Um, but here you go. I mean... It's not the most exciting ship for sure. I mean, I think it has a nice shape. Um, and also, I guess, if you're kind of into hard fiction and stuff like that, this could also be your cup of tea. I guess it is minifigure scale, but that is to be confirmed. I guess, I guess uh, these are the uh, capsules, 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 whatever, where basically the sleeping beds, right? So I guess it's kind of minifigure scale, um, but that remains to be seen. And then they have availability again over here in Europe for 40 euros, um, as always in Europe, that includes tax, uh, 3.9 cents a piece um, for the Unicorn Wonder Garden, the 105435 now available, 1,027 pieces. And what can I say? Oh my gosh, I, I guess this is the most colorful set that Blue Bricks has ever done. Um, you have it, you know, you have it all, like pink and yellow and green, orange, blue, golden, it's everything in there. And it's compatible, as Blue Bricks uh, points out here, with the other unicorns that they are selling. And there is an exclusive rainbow in there. It's King Rainbow, uh, exclusive uh, unicorn in there, excuse me. And it's King Rainbow. Here you go.
uh, the king is having his court. Anyhow, let's move on to Kobe. And here over here in Europe, we have availability. Um, again, as at Blue Bricks, in this case, the Blue Bricks store. So uh, coming into retail is the E100. And I'm not sure if this is just a mishap. I mean, it's no translation. I think Kobe is not translating the German ones, right? Yeah, yeah it's Panzerkampfwagen, which is, I mean, that's technically like the long-term Panzer is German for tank. Panzerkampfwagen means tank fighting vehicle, which is like the long-term, if you will, for a tank. It's the E100. I think I have. Have I reported on this one? Yes, I did it back in the day in Oak. In uh, February, the E100, the entire E platform was kind of uh, the future generation, was supposed to be the future generation of German Wehrmacht uh, during Second World War. It never came to that. I think the E100 is the only one where they actually came into a prototype phase. I think they built like almost one and a half of these bad boys. Pretty large tanks. Uh, Pretty much kind of ridiculous again, but not as awful as mouse. So um, actually, in, in when this thing was developed, that was already a time do, after the mouse disaster where Hitler was strongly against that. I mean, many people, as you may know, mouse was kind of the cra it was kind of Hitler's craziness. Um, but um, after mouse, he learned his lesson. It seems so, but never the never that. In this case, however, it was like the engineers who pushed the project forward, and not the crazy dictator. But anyhow, uh, this bad boy from Kobe has one thousand five hundred and eleven pieces. You can uh, Kobe is listing it over here in Europe for one hundred twenty five bucks. Uh, again, including tax and in retail, you start to see it now around one hundred and seventeen. As always, a bit complicated. I do not have listings for Kobe um, outside of Europe. Anyhow, it's E100. Um, and the great thing is, I mean, it's not as big as a mouse, but it's a 1 by 28 scale, relatively large tank. And as a result, you have a little bit of interior. Uh, it seems there is uh, some interior in the turret. And then you have the engine room. And you can even remove the engine, which is cool. In general, that's as um, I've, I've said this in the past, this is the one thing that Kobe is lacking a bit, interior and their vehicles. I mean, they started with, with Tirpitz and Bismarck. They started a little bit recently in, in battleships. And of course, with Maus and a few other very large tanks, they have also a decent interior. This one here is kind of a compromise by means, hey, you have at least the turret. Um, that's that's a lot more than most Kobe tanks have. And then we have um, over here also availability of this tiny bad boy 24541 by Kobe Trabant 601 a Polizei Police, whatever you might call it, uh, Trabant, that is actually former Eastern German uh, car brand. And they, these things were actually made out of plastic, uh, literally. <laughs> um, and yeah, it's kind of famous part of, of Eastern German history. But of course, they are not making these anymore since the end of DDR. Anyhow, uh, 82 pieces, around 12 to 13 bucks. Kobe itself is listing these with 15 bucks, one by 35 in scale. With that, we're moving on to Yaki. Here we have an announcement or a first introduction by Bluebricks. I, Bluebricks also listing a price, which is quite uncommon. So um, that's not, maybe there is a mistake. I'm not 100% sure. Anyhow, it's not, it's a set I haven't talked about before. No, I have not. It's again a music box, in this case with the Big Ben. I think it looks rather beautiful. It has only 391 pieces, but I guess the music box is like one big piece. So I guess 25 bucks is, is totally acceptable, considering that you have the music box included. I think if you're not interested in that, then I guess this set is not really for you. I've never built any Yaki sets, but I'm hearing good things about it. And then we have a first um, indication from Mattel um, around the new Witcher lineup um, on their website. So it seems the German has a listing here for Europe and the Canadian one. I don't know. I haven't seen the US one. Usually I, for international audience to give a price indication, I use the US site from Mattel, but they haven't listed it. So the European site has listed it for 175 bucks. They also claim on the website from Mattel that it has only 430 pieces. However, the which, which would be ridiculous, right? I mean, for 175 bucks, but actually the box says it's 1170 which also seems to make a bit more sense um 
And the Canadian side, of course, I guess Canada is also without VAT, right? Uh, without tax. So the Canadian side lists is list this set for 150 uh, Canadian dollars. I, I guess we have to wait until we see it in, in, in retail. A couple of European retailers have announced that they will get it in stock. Haven't seen it in Amazon yet, etc. So I think we have still a bit more to wait. Anyhow. Uh, we have now this listing of the HDL28. That's uh, Gerald's Griffin Hunt. Um, there's also a French variant name on this, but I can't pronounce that. So anyhow, uh, it has one minifigure included, of course. The Witcher, Gerald, is included. And then you have the Beast that actually has a beautiful wing. Really looking forward to this one. I mean, um, Met Mega did, you know, or Mattel did an amazing job back in the day with the dragons of um, Game of Thrones. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Um, the set itself, the building itself, it seems it has lighting included, even with a cable, which I think is quite nice. I.e., I, or I guess you can put it into a, a, just a, a wall outlet, right? Or I guess a USB charger, maybe something like that. Um, but yeah, I think there are a couple of interesting pieces in there. In general, I like the idea. I'm not sure if I like the price for what you are getting. The building seems a bit simple. On the other hand, there you have this amazing sword and you have Geralt and you have the monster and this amazing wing. So let's see what the price is going to be. I don't know how it is internationally, but over here, for instance, in Germany, if you, for instance, look at Castle Grayskull, I think Amazon is selling this right now over here in Europe, like 60% below list price. So Long story short, Mattel usually has on their store kind of ridiculous prices. So let's see what, what the actual retail pricing is going to be. With that, for all you castle enthusiasts, um, we have a couple of um, first pictures from a new lineup of Morg sets and the medieval lineup by Morg, um, i.e. with Sing Bao pieces. And um, this is, seems to be, again, a design by Balon. Um, I haven't seen this design neither on his Instagram or Replicable account yet, but the box seems to indicate that this is his design as well. We are talking about the 33010 now. This thing has 7,891 pieces. Is. This is crazy. That is, uh, I think. What, what is what is what is Lion? Uh, what is Lego's castle right now? Lion Lego Lion Knight's castle has how many pieces? Four thousand five hundred. So it's three thousand more pieces uh, than uh, Lego's castle has. I mean, of course, it's not as big as Castle Blaustein is by Blue Bricks, but nevertheless, it is. It is in the. To it's a top tier castle from just from the size perspective, and I must rather say, it's also quite beautifully done and I think it's a good compromise of having certain areas with a lot of detail so you can see the courtyard here that is very detailed also if you look at this picture there is what looks a bit like I don't know if it's going to be a throne room or more like more like a chapel not one percent sure so there are a couple of areas that are very detailed and then there are other areas that are rather simple uh, without much detail so I think I really like this this approach because um, on one hand you have a good starting point right you have a huge gigantic castle it's very modular you can open it up so it's a beautiful castle uh, maybe a bit too big for children I guess it's more like a grown-up set but uh, and you have a couple of very detailed rooms that give you an idea where to go. But then you have areas where you can, you know, start put, throwing in your own bricks and, and start detailing and putting some life to the castle, which I think is a great approach. And yeah, speaking of such, here you can see the box. And if you look here at the design by, this is Balon's uh, signature as we see it on all his other designs. So that's why I guess this is authorized by him. But yeah, we have to wait and see. And I guess, um, yeah, a couple of folks, um, I'm sure I'm pretty excited because it, it, there's a good chance that this thing might land on Rebrickable as well for your own uh, pieces to throw in. Like this one here, which is also now... We have a number and announcements and a couple of pictures. The Medieval Watermill, the 33005, same series, same designer. In this case, as always, you will find it on setdb.org, um, the link directly to all the sets I'm talking about. As always, you will find for your listeners in the podcast show notes or for you YouTube viewers, it's uh, down below in the description. 
Uh, and and as always, when I as soon as I have a replicable um, ID, I will link it in ZDB as well. So this is the medieval watermill. It's going to have 2,312 pieces. Um, personally, I was never a big fan of the wheel design. I mean, Balon has this design on replicable for some time. The building itself, I think it's it's quite beautiful. There are prints included. So Mork is using Zingbao pieces. Zingbao has a pretty good um, printing business. So that's why you have usually in these sets. Uh, quite a lot of uh, printed pieces. You can see this here also these wood, wooden planks here on the left right now where the mouse pointer is they seem to be printed and the interior is, is quite detailed. I'm still no big fan of these Nexonite shield, shield uh, based roofs but here you go. I know a lot of people love this kind of stuff especially since Lego started it with the medieval Smith. So let's move on to Medieval Bakery, the 33007. Um, again, same designer, same series, 2,310 pieces. Um, here we go. And yeah, again, beautifully done. Again, the same concept by means, okay, the roof fits very well with all the other mock medieval buildings, but of course also with, with Lego. And of course also all these amazing mocks. I mean, just look at Rebrickable, how many alternate builds of the 21325 by Lego you have there. So, I mean, I don't know, if you want to build a medieval city, you can buy sets and Rebrickable um mock designs like I don't know you could I guess you could come easily build a village with 30 buildings no problem no problem there um, anyhow this one has again this is interesting so Zingbao has two kind of, of horses one is a lot like the Lego horse and I think this is the case here it's almost like 1% the Lego horse design which I think is kind of problematic and then they have also another design which does not look like a Lego horse but as you can see this one here seems to be um, the Lego variant again, which is quite crazy. By the way, if you do hope to make the bargain here, I mean, I have seen these horses. I have, I, I had a couple of these. Um, they are not the same quality as Lego. <laughs> they are very far away. But anyhow, um, here you go, Medieval Bakery. And then last but not least, this is one where we, do, similar to the castle, I have only a couple of renderings here. This is the Medieval Potion Hut. Again, same designer, same lineup. Looks very similar to, to one or two of the other buildings, but it has entirely different color scheme. And yes, as you can see, it's called Potion Hut. So it is a bit, it is a bit creepy. It is a bit more like fantastical. So this look, it looks a bit more like high fantasy. I mean, all of these because it's Lego based, right? The original design, Nexonite shield, etc. I mean, all of that is not truly medieval. Uh, it's not even close. So it's always a bit, you know, um, uh, fictional. But uh, this one here goes a bit more in this direction, I would say, right? It's a bit like, okay, this is like, there there could be a witch living or something like that. So if this is more your cup of tea, a bit, a bit more color, a bit more uh, fantastical and fictional, um, here you go. This is the first one. Let's move on. Uh, Mork is actually quite active. They are uh, bringing uh, us a new, uh, a second set working with yellow box 777. So I've talked about this design designer before. Um, so far, I think uh, the more collaboration is the first one. Actually, Yellow Box Designs, um, I really recommend. As always, everything is linked, um, like I said before. I really recommend taking a look at Yellow Box's Instagram account. To my knowledge, that designer is not. It's also from South Korea, I think, and it's not really putting any, any mocks out there anymore. His designs have been stolen by certain brands like crazy. It's, it's almost ridiculous how many of his designs are out there as sets and not authorized. Anyhow, Mock is, you know, is, is, is on the high ground and um, they are working with Yellow Box here and this is the second set. Um, it's the Upside Down Cafe. I think Yellow Box right now has also a similar design. Um, uh, actually, I think as a Lego Ideas entry. I'm not sure if it's Lego Ideas or the new Bricklink um, operation, but I think it's Lego Ideas. Anyhow, this is an upside down building now as a set by Morg. As you can see, there's a lot of, I mean, actually, if you look at the building direction, um, it's actually, yeah, it's literally an upside down house. So I guess you have a lot of changing, a lot of snot technique in here. It's quite crazy. And from that point of view, I think it should be really interesting to build this one. So I'm really thinking about uh, 
uh, doing this one. Uh, by the way, if you see here, and this is also what's said to be a stadium because this is what Mork is putting out, but I think they made a mistake here. For me, this thing looks like it's on a regular base plate, like a modular 32 by 32 stats. So this should be 20 a half centimeters in width. Uh, and, and Mork here states 17.5. I think that is a mishap on their side. I think it's a regular base plate. Anyhow, speaking of base plates, uh, moving on, then they also announced a couple of buildings that are interesting, actually. It's three of them. They all have uh, roughly around 1,500 pieces. So that already tells you it's not a full-blown modular. However, they are as wide as a modular. So 32 by 32 studs. I think not all three of them, but some of them, as you can see here on the left, uh, down below, um, even has the two uh, Technic bricks uh, one by two in there. So you can connect it to a modular, but it's not as deep as a modular. Um, I think it is more like in the 20 stud ballpark, I would guess, um, roughly speaking, and it's open in the back. So it looks to me like a compromise. If you're in the Lego world, it means it's somewhere half in between, let's say, the pure uh, kids uh, sets like Creator 3-in-1 buildings or um, the Harry Potter buildings that are usually open on the back. You know, it's, it's something to play with for kids. And then, of course, you have your big, very expensive modulars on the other side with 3,000 pieces and more. And this thing seems to be a little bit in the middle, which I really, um, really like. I salute them for this because that's what I'm usually thinking between the kids' toys, <laughs> so to say, that companies like Lego are selling and the grown-up sets. There's a quite a big gap both from the pricing perspective you know moving up from i don't know 70 bucks to more than 200 nowadays plus also from the challenge from building perspective and the size of the set there's quite a gap so mark is, is closing this with this lineup so first one we are we have been looking at in the last two three minutes is the city hotel it's the uh, 2115, the second one, and all of them have a similar design, uh, color-wise, tan-based mostly. Um, like I said, on regular plates, because you just cannot do the steps with, with base plates, right? Um, so it's on regular plates. Um, and now we're talking about the 2114. It's a city restaurant. Uh, 1,489 pieces and uh, uh, and all of them include lighting it seems which is quite nice and they have like three floors um so and open in the back like i said or three of them this last but not least is the city cafe it's a 2113 1,443 pieces and like I said, roughly 25 centimeters in width, 25 and a half, because it's 32 studs, 17 and a half in depth. And I think all of them are roughly like 35 centimeters in height. City coffee looks quite nice. Actually, cafe is wrong here, right? Um, I think Mock itself calls it coffee. Yeah, it's city coffee. I should fix that. It's not French, it's English. So let's move on. But I mean, even the coffee, that's, that's written wrong, right? With one F? Interesting. Anyhow, let's move on to the retro lamp. So this is a brick built lamp. Actually, I've seen or we I've discussed here or talked about a, a Lego Ideas entry that looked very similar, but I do assume this one here is authentic. Maybe that's something to take a look at. The 31023. It's a lamp, it's brick built, 987 pieces. I mean, I have a lot what I call my brick built lamps in over here, but usually I, you know, I use a regular set and then I put, I don't know, a light tailing or a light my bricks kit into it. Um, this is what I would prefer. And then we have a U-boat by Panlos. It's a type seven U-boat. So I think to this day, this is, I mean, obviously German, um, U-boat from Second World War. To my knowledge, Type 7 U-boats are still the most manufactured U-boat U-boat submarine. Let's call it submarine. Lineup of all time, to my knowledge, because they made five, 600 of these. Anyhow, uh, Panlos decided to make an enormous set. This thing has 6,112 pieces. It's 120 centimeters in length, 29 in heights, and 13 deep. So this thing is gigantic. Um, I'm not sure if I like the color scheme. Obviously, this has nothing to do of like how these things were printed. I mean, I mean it's Panlos, not Kobe. But nevertheless, I mean... Yeah, I think if they have uh, would have decided to go for light bluish or even maybe even dark bluish gray, I guess it should be light bluish gray. Um, then I would be much more comfortable with it. This, I guess, it's kind of sand blue. 
uh, is not really my cup of tea for this. Like, it's it's not authentic enough due to that. But nevertheless, it has a lot of interior to look at. So if you if you're always thinking like, hey, these these puny tiny Kobe U-boats are not really my cup of tea. I need something bigger. Then you you know here you go. Um, Panlos U-boat. So that was that. Then a quick um, info. Um, if you, the discount code for Bawea, which is one of my retail partners um, from China, they also have actually, um, they also ship from Europe and the US, for instance. But now, anyhow, um, usually they have like a 5% discount code. Uh, so they just let, so they have an, um, an they have a promotion right now with a 13% discount. I think this started like two weeks ago and they just told me last week that they will extend it for roughly a month. So for the next couple of weeks, you should see whenever you put in my discount code, I think it's like Merlin minus Bawea, you will find it in the show notes and, and also on the website. Um, it's actually 13% right now. And I think this will go on for a couple of additional weeks however i do not have confirmation yet on when it will end but i don't know anyhow if you plan to shop this could be quite interesting because 13 percent is not bad actually anyhow let's move on to mocks of the week and here we have a couple of interesting things that i was able to dig up uh on Rebrickable. as always usually i i look at newly um released mocks of the last couple of days when i you know plan for this show and here we have a star wars imperial bunker by Zerino 90 it has 4386 pieces so this is not a small one uh designer is asking for 15 bucks for the menu instructions and everything and what can I say? Um, it's it's an Imperial bunker. I mean, it has the tank included or the troop transport included. This seems to me not to be the Lego set, but actually it's custom built. But I mean, even if you have the set, you could easily, you know, buy the instruction and, and you just build the bunker itself. And I really like this thing. It's quite open. I think there's a lot of stuff you could do with it, right? You could even change the interior a little bit. You could put like an A-wing into it, something like that. A TIE fighter. I mean, there's a lot of option um, to, to use a smog. So anyhow, I uh, really like the design. Let's move on. This actually is the base here, but I just want to show you this. So uh, the Brick Cave has an actually an alternate build out out there for um, where is it? Where is it? I can't find the alternate build itself. Uh, here's a link. So um, the Brick Cave has done already in the past um, an alternate build of the 75258 Cop Van Speeder. Uh, it has 146 pieces and he's asking for the alternate build for two bucks fifty. So th this is already great news. Really like the set. However, I never really liked the stand. Um, I was a big fan of Cop of Cop uh, in in the Mandalorian slash a Boba Fett, and I was I really have a like a like a grudge <laughs> uh, with with Disney nowadays because of what they did with the character. But okay, that's just me. Anyhow, um, so in case you didn't like the stand, the Brick Cave has now also released um, free of charge in a beautiful base, and I think this really makes the thing shine. I think it's like I said, it's an amazing character. He was so interesting. Really like the speeder design. I really loved it in the Mandalorian because you know this speeder design based on the previous pot racer design is just so amazing a great character and i really like the base especially with the with the droid the battle droid here down below a uh, beautiful design you get the platform free of charge here you go you are welcome and then let's move on to uh, another amazing design by sir wesley 86 red lines castle 2 five bucks for a mock design that has 10,000 pieces. So this one I really like. I mean, I like the overall castle. It's quite beautiful. It's not that detailed. So it's, I think, one of those mocks that are a great starting point to build your own castle, right? Because you you can, you know, just build this thing and you have an amazing structure. It, it looks great. It's it's very consistent in its design. and But it's also very plain in, to a certain degree, especially on the inside, right? So you could build this bad boy and then throw in a couple of 
extra thousand pieces and make it your own castle. Or you could just, you know, buy the instructions and, and copy a couple of the building techniques to come up with your own castle. I think there's a lot, you know, you have a gatehouse, you have the towers, you have a building, roofs. Um, you have it all, right? You have bridges. Um, so you could really use this one to get your own project going. And I think a lot of people struggle with that, especially in the beginning, especially if you want to go large. It's not that easy, right, to build something in this size uh, just on your own. So I think this could be an interesting instruction to, to get started. And it's just five bucks. It's amazing. And then we have something else that is amazing. So um, many of you may know this design. So this is Mortes. Mortes? Mortes? I'm not really sure how it's supposed to be pr uh, pronounced. Uh, Corellian uh, Corvette, the 10 to 4 blockhead runner, CR90, whatever name you may give this one. So this is Senator Organa's um, ship, of course, um, very well known from uh, episode 4 and, of course, Rogue One. So long story short, this is a very well famous design. Um, Mortes has done some of the most, like 1Ks, you know, some of the most well-known, enormous Star Wars mocks out there, has unfortunately been also, you know, copied and stolen by a couple of brands, unfortunately, but long story short, um, there's... Uh, there was a bit of lacking. I think All Out Brick had a digital variant of this, like instructions for this one. So now, but I think this one is not so easy to come by anymore. So tell, tell that real, you know, has jumped in and has created instructions for the CR90 for you. And it's actually free of charge. And I think he or she has done the same thing also with a very famous uh, Mortes uh, Nebulon B medical frigate, which is a gigantic BMOS. It has 6,344 pieces, but it is a beautiful design. And again, uh, instructions completely free of charge. So this is great service to the community for this amazing design for you to keep building. And I think, I mean, even if this thing has a couple of years on it, it's still an amazing mock design. And um, I guess you can have a lot of fun with this one. Anyhow, let's move on to uh, Cypher Diaz, which is cool to have as a nickname. Anyhow, Jamestown Base from All Mankind. I've actually never seen that. Uh, this mock here is 2,282 pieces, uh, five bucks. Yeah, I guess if, you know, kind of hot fiction is your cup of tea, then... Um cup of tea I wanted to say then I think this is a great design uh, it looks really beautiful unfortunately only one picture uh, which is a bit unfortunate so I have no idea how well done the interior is but at least from the outside looks really cool I'm not sure if I would go with this design for the outside but the uh, base itself is, is done very well looks really really cool let's move on to a design by Jaco Leko no idea if this is how it's supposed to be pronounced. 3,858 pieces for Villa Picard. So it's not like Picard from uh, Star Trek, um, but it is supposed to be a French villa, French building. It's a modular building, 15 bucks for the menu. It's very detailed. I really like... Um, there's also a couple of beautiful designs in there. For instance, the trees. I really like the trees. I mean, they are so simple. They are just one by one round bricks in a nutshell with a couple of limb elements and a couple of leaves. And here you go. I mean, you have great trees. They look beautiful and they are so easy to, to make, right? So there's a lot of interesting stuff. I'm also not sure the build is a bit, the picture, I'm sorry, is a bit fuzzy, but it looks like these are printed calculators here used uh, to decorate the bridge. I may I may mistaken, but it looks like calculator, <laughs> which is cool. Anyhow, uh, this thing has like four floors, um, and they are very detailed. Everything is tiled. Um, really like the really like the design, both from the interior point of view, how the building looks from the outside. I mean, the blue roof is not really my cup of tea. I guess I would go for black maybe, um, but yeah. Here you go. Nice design. And then we have again a design by Lego Profi. I mean, I've, I think I'm almost talked here about all of his designs, but this one is again really cool. First of all, I still believe that we are in general lacking also from companies like Lego um, uh, sets, you know, something to put around your modular buildings, right? You have the modular collection by Lego, but what are you going to do with it, right? And I think a lot of folks, of course, you know, get building on their own and, and build streets and everything. Um, 
and of course parks and landscape around the buildings. But a lot of folks out there, you know, like some like some some hand holding, some guidance. So what I would really like to see is first of all, I really like mocks around this in this area, but I would also like to see more sets actually that help folks, you know, to fill the gaps between the modular buildings. Anyhow, Lego Profi has created, I think, a cool design here. It's I guess 32 by 32 studs. It's not on base plate, it's on regular, I guess 16 by 16 plates. But it's basically a park, right? A park that is on the same scale as um modulars are and I think the park itself the the plate itself I think is pretty cool I guess you need a couple of couple of these because it's like a river um, but of course you could also see it more like a lake and and you know uh, maybe change uh, changes a little bit to make this like a small pond or lake if you will or you could you just move on build a couple of these and make it a full-blown river uh, that's of course up to you um, but I really like the design. There's a nice bridge in there. There are pretty cool um, street lamps in there, a nice tree. Um, so everything, even a squirrel, everything that you need. And he's selling the design for 250 Here we go. I think that was mocks of the week. So let's move on to Lego Ideas. Here we have two additional entries, if I'm not mistaken, that made the 10,000. First of all, welcome to Narnia, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. 75th anniversary, anniversary set, so obviously this is relating to the book, not to the movie representation. And I really like the design. Uh, Narnia, I think, is a license I would really love to see uh, to be implemented by Lego or a set done by Lego. Like the wardrobe design, the sled is amazing. Actually, I don't know how uh, Rip Peachy yep, 9007. I'm pretty sure I've pronounced this entirely wrong. Not sure how the designer has done the minifigures, but they look really, really cool. Um, and I would I would love to see a set like this. And then we have a second entry Wednesday. Welcome to Ophelia Hall by Brick Max. Uh, Wednesday is, I think that's a series on Netflix. I've never seen it, so I have no idea how authentic this thing is, but it looks nice. I mean, the roof, from my point of view, is a bit too simplistic, if you will. Too many stats for my taste, but the rest of the set looks really, really cool. It looks like a little bit of witch craziness, which could be really cool. So while looking at the set, I kind of feel interested of taking a look at Wednesday on Netflix. Anyhow... That was the show for this week. I hope you liked the show. For those of you who watch this on YouTube, please leave a like or comment or even better, subscribe to the channel. For you podcast listeners, please leave a review, comment or like on Apple Podcasts, Spotify or wherever you listen to the show. Thanks for listening. See you next week.